further amendment? Mr. Deal. I have an amendment at the desk. It's ECR 16. Mr. Chairman, I reserve a point of order. The uh, amendment by the gentleman from Georgia, Mr. Deal, will be considered as read, and the chair will note that a point of order has been reserved by the gentlelady from Colorado. Mr. Deal is recognized to explain his amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is a little bit technical, so I hope you'll uh, try to follow what I'm going to say. The last time this bill was before the committee, I raised the question of whether or not we created the possibility of allowing the secretary to approve a product that was patented as the standard, and thereby, by approving a patented product as the standard, create a monopoly in the hands of the company that held the patent. Now, to the credit of the, uh, of the chairman, when I raised the issue, the bill that is before us today has attempted to address it, but I, I personally don't feel that it's addressed it uh, as appropriately as we should. The change was, there was no reference in the original bill, as I recall, to this issue last time. The change says that when determining the effective date of a new, sta of a new uh, patent, a new product, the secretary shall consider whether or not there is a patent that's in existence. Now, what that says to me is the secretary um, establishes the standard. And then the question is, well, what effective date are we going to have for this standard to go into effect to be the standard for this new modified risk product? Well, let's, and then it says he shall consider whether or not there's a patent in place on that standard. Let's say that, uh, that the standard is agreed to, and then he, he looks at it and says, well, it's a patented issue, and there are 10 more years left on the patent. I think common sense is going to tell us that the secretary is not going to defer the approval of the standard for another 10 years. He's going to approve it, and when he approves it, he has then created a monopoly in the hands of the party that holds the patent. Now, that's the way I conceive the, the underlying bill's language. My amendment, and I've come off of where I was last time. I simply said last time that he could not approve uh, a standard for a new modified risk product if that standard was a patented item. I have changed it not to make it uh, a prohibition, but to simply say that uh, he would consider in establishing the standard whether or not it is a patented product that meets that standard and therefore would create a monopoly by approving the standard. Under the underlying bill, he's already required to consider whether or not the new standard is technically achievable. I think it's only reasonable that he would also consider whether or not the standard is protected by patent. And by adopting a standard that is a patented standard, he's therefore created a monopoly in the hands of whatever company holds that particular patent. I don't think that's where we want to go. That's not where I want to go. I think that it should be a standard that a multitude of products, perhaps, should be able to meet that same standard. But if we allow a patented product to become the standard, then we've created a monopoly. And we are the Commerce Committee, and I don't think the Commerce Committee ought to be in favor of creating monopolies. I appreciate your indulgence, uh, and I would urge the adoption of the amendment. It is not an obligatory language. It just simply says, in the process of setting the standard, simply consider whether or not you have m created a monopoly because it is already a patented product that you're basing the standard on. I would yield back my time. Mr. Chairman, I withdraw my reservation. The gentlelady from Colorado withdraws her reservations. The gentleman from Georgia yields back the balance of his time. The chair would recognize himself. I, I, I remember when we last considered this bill, there was the issue that you had raised, and I thought we had dealt with it by saying that the uh, Secretary would consider the technological achievability and availability of patents and setting effective dates for any new product standards. As I hear, and, and we did that, but as I hear you now, uh, you want the Secretary to look at the issue of whether a patent is 
pertains to the product before setting Would the standard? chairman yield? Yes, certainly. Yes, sir. You did make a change, and I think that's fine, but it only says that he shall consider when to set the effective date of the standard in light of whether or not there's a patent. In other words, he's already set the standard. If he sets the standard and the standard is a patented product that meets that standard and therefore is protected as the only product, he's then faced with the quandary of, well, I've established a standard. Now I have to consider the patent life of the product that meets that standard and I would have to delay the effective date of when the standard goes into place based on the patent. Now, he doesn't have to delay it, but if he doesn't delay it till the patent expires, then he, by virtue of that, has created a monopoly by approving that patented product as a standard. All I'm saying is, let's just require that he look at the issue of whether or not a patented product is the only one that meets the standard he's about to approve before he approves the standard, not, not put himself in the box of approving something that is patent protected and then having to say, well, so what? I'm going to let a monopoly exist for however much longer the patent life is. That, it's a matter of timing on it, Mr. Chairman. I, I, I hear what you're saying, and I have an enormous regard for your uh, knowledge of this area, but I'm worried that if we put this into the statute, that it's going to be an invitation for litigation every time there's a standard that's established. Um, I, 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 let me request you that <laughs> they withdraw this amendment and let me think it over and see if we could agree on something. I, I, I haven't thought it through and I'll, I don't know that I disagree with you, but I feel uncomfortable accepting the amendment at this time. If the chairman will yield. Yeah. I will withdraw it, but I do, I'm serious about the issue. I don't think we intend to create this, and I'm not trying to be obstructionist on this issue, but I do think we do not want to intentionally create a monopoly uh, or maybe unintentionally create a monopoly. So I would, uh, I would ask unanimous consent to withdraw the amendment with that understanding. Uh, I, I appreciate that, and uh, I, I certainly agree with you. We don't want monopolies uh, uh, just uh, blocking uh, progress. And uh, there ought to be limits on monopolies. We've discussed this issue in other contexts. So I, I thank you very much, and you, you have my word that we'll uh, t t try to think it through together.